I intend to rent a horse at Ostia, and then travel to Petula. And you? Me? I am not a merchant. I am from Corinth, and I am going to Rome. But in Rome you will find only ruins. Have you not heard that half of the world's largest city has been destroyed by the wrath of the gods? The gods? No one has ever seen the gods descend from their thrones. They are made of stone. They cannot set fires. Look, the port of Ostia is near. You can see it. In Rome, I must find my brothers. I wish you much luck on your journey, my friend. If in seven days you wish to leave on the same ship, you will find me here waiting for you. And if you bring this horse back in good health, I will give you one half of the sum you have paid me in fair exchange. Agreed. Until then, goodbye! Stop! Are you a citizen of Rome? My name is Diodorus. I am Greek and a Roman citizen by birth. From Corinth, and I'm going to Rome. You cannot enter. The city still smells of death. I am not afraid of death, sir. I must find my brothers. And how will you find your brothers? I know how I will find them, Legionnaire. Let me pass. As you wish. If you insist, you may pass. Come through. Traitors! Traitors! It is clear you are not from Rome. I am Greek. It was they who caused the fire of Rome, and they have been sentenced. They have been justly convicted, in my opinion. Did someone see them set fire to the city? There must be witnesses, I assume. What does it matter if someone saw them? It is known that they are the sworn enemies of the gods of Rome. We need no proof. I don't believe it. Are you trying to tell me that no one saw them? It is obvious that you are Greek, not Roman. Now we should go. The show is about to start. Yes, this is true. I will go. Come on! This way! Faster! Come on! palace upon those burnt houses. It will stretch to the Oppian Hill and will be called the Domus Aurea, the House of Gold. It will be even grander than my other palace. What do the people say? You're adored. They all adore you. You rescued them from hunger by giving them wheat and now are planning to make Rome more beautiful than ever. Everyone loves you, Augustus. Even your enemies. Everyone. I have no enemies, Tigellinus. Or do you know of enemies that you hide from me? <laughs> Tigellinus, answer me. No, Augustus. Believe me, in Rome you have no enemies, I assure you. Do you expect me to believe these lies, Tigellinus? An emperor must have enemies. It would be dishonor to have none. That is true, but I mean that your enemies are harmless. The people of Rome love and protect their emperor. Of course, that is because of all that I do for them. Every day I give food to everyone, even servants and slaves. I let them enter my gardens, inside the Pantheon, in the baths of Agrippa, and in all imperial property. I also reduced the price of wheat and ordered every commercial vessel entering the city by the Tiber to return, carrying a load of rubble to dump in the marshes of Ostia. I serve my people. What more could I do? <laughs> Nothing, Augustus. You are like a father, but what are we to do with the Christians? What have the people been told about them? Many citizens now believe that it was the Christians who set fire to the city, but you know that is not the truth. Continue to repeat this accusation. Nothing calms the people more than finding and sentencing the perpetrator of a crime. And I want all the citizens to witness the brutal death of those who have dared to strike at Rome, the eternal city. Better them, I suppose, than anyone else. The Christians are a small sect of the Jews. No one cares about them, not even the Jews themselves. They are quite harmless. They never fight back or revolt. And we've arrested many of them. Continue to arrest them. I saw them. It was a gruesome death. Excuse me, has Piedoni arrived yet? He's over there. Don't you see him? Thank you. Are you Piedoni? Yes. Who are you? I am Diodorus from Corinth. Come with me, brother. I will accompany you.
Surround the house. Who are you looking for? This is the house of a respected citizen of Rome. I ordered the prefect, I now arrest you. And of what crime am I accused? The crime of setting fire to Rome. Me? By myself? Not by yourself, but with your accomplices, the Christians. This accusation is ridiculous. But you are a Christian. I am a Christian and a citizen of Rome. Everyone knows that it was the Christians who set fire to Rome. They are guilty and must be punished for their actions against the city. Take him! He's you innocent! Can't do this! It's a lie! How on earth could you accuse such a godly man of setting fire to the city of Rome? I'll defend myself, don't worry. These are false charges and the authorities know it. And where are you taking me now? You will be taken to court and there if you confess to being a Christian, you will be taken to Nero's circus where you will be killed by beasts. Take him away! Take him away! Are you afraid of the beasts in Nero's circus? Are you afraid of the death of your body? Remember that Jesus, too, suffered an ignominious death on the cross. So why are you afraid? He rose from the dead, and we, too, will rise again. When we lived in sin, we were weak, but now that we believe in him, we are no longer weak because of one man, Adam. Sin and with it death entered the world. In the same way, one man, Jesus, has overcome death and has won eternal life oh, for us all. I, I'm not afraid. Death does not frighten me, but the lions do. I'm ashamed to admit it, but the lions terrify me. I assure you that when your time comes, brother, you will see Jesus come to you and you will no longer feel fear. Instead, you will feel immense joy. Anyway, I shall precede you as many brothers have before you. Then I shall not be afraid either. May the Lord's angels watch over us and grant us a night of peace and holy thoughts. We will sleep with our ancestors in the family tomb. Here the Praetorians will not find us. Go to sleep, children. You, dear Timothy, have followed me in your way of living, in your plans, your faith, charity and patience. You have seen the persecutions to which I have been subjected in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. The Lord has delivered me from all suffering. As for you, I beseech you to follow what you have learned in the scriptures, which you have known since childhood, and which are useful to educate in the way of justice. They lead to salvation, which is obtained through faith in Jesus Christ, who wants to see that all men are saved and aware of the truth. There is only one God and only one mediator between God and man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself to redeem us all. <laughs> Does anyone live in that house? Can't you see it's closed? No one's lived there for ages. By any chance, are you Lucidus? How do you know that? Who gave you my name? A brother who knows you, Piedone. Are you a brother as well? Yes, of course. I have come from Corinth to see Paul. They're searching for him to kill him. He must hide. Yes, but do you know where he is? Leave your horse here. Come with me. Go down and then come back up. Of this, I, Paul, was made messenger and apostle. Ah, Theodorus, why did you come to Rome? The brothers in Corinth, after hearing of the fire in Rome, want news about you and the brothers who live here. As you can see, I am well, Diodorus. But we all continue to fear for your life, Paul. You are in grave danger. My life is in the hands of the Lord. Paul, in the port of Ostia, there is a ship that is awaiting us. If you come with me, I assure you that the brothers of the Church of Corinth will be grateful. In the future, you could return to Rome to continue the work that you have begun here. No, I cannot. Today, I saw wagons full of Christians being led to Nero's circus to be killed by wild beasts. They have been unjustly accused of having burned Rome. Paul, if you come with me to Corinth, you can return to Rome as soon as this madness is over. I will not come with you to Corinth, Theodorus. 
The Lord has brought me to this city to be his witness, and for this I am ready to give my life if necessary. Go back to Corinth and tell the brothers there that they are always with me in my heart. Now go, brother. Your ship awaits you. Paul, please go back inside the house. It's useless, Lucidus. There is no time. The soldiers are here. Are you Saul of Tarsu? No one calls me by that name any longer. Well then, is it you or not? Yes, it's me. We have come to arrest you. The Christian sect has been named enemy of the land and enemy of the gods of Rome. You, sir, are considered one of their leaders. I will come with you. But may I ask who it was that told you that I could be found in this isolated house? You certainly have many enemies here. <gasps> Get on the wagon! Paul! Oh. Yes. This is our celebration, my dear brothers. In the year of our Lord, 67. My time has come, O oh Lord my God. My blood is to be shed. I am ready to leave this life. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Thank you, Lord. My spirit is in your hands. Why did you call me? Ask him. He wants to speak with you. Very well. What happened? The Praetorians arrested me. They took me to the judge who asked me, are you a Christian? And I answered, no, I'm not a Christian. They asked me to burn incense and worship the gods of Rome. I did it and saw the lions devour our brothers in Nero's circus. I am a traitor. Tell us, what shall we do with Crispus? There are many people who know of his betrayal. The way of martyrdom is not easy. What are we to do, Peter? Crispus is crying for his betrayal, and he will continue to cry for a long time to come. It is right that his sin be forgiven. And the brothers? What am I to tell the brothers, Peter? You are to tell them what you have heard, Silas. From today, Crispus will accompany me in my ministry. He will be with me always. I will do whatever you wish, Peter. You will do only the will of God and nothing else. <laughs> you must not be afraid. Your husbands were the crowns of martyrdom and they now watch over you. I call for you because he is dying. Pray for your son, woman, and give all that you can to the poor who come to your door. And if none comes to your door, you go to look for those in need and help them to live. Help them in any way you can. Your son will recover. Peter, we desperately need your help. I came all the way here to speak to you with my husband because he must tell you what he did. Certainly not I. He must be the one to tell you. I advise you to speak the truth. Do you remember it was you who baptized me a few years ago? But of course I remember you. You were called Marcello. I have to confess my sin. I married her in front of God, but then I went with another woman. I abandoned my wife for more than a year, and I also abandoned my children. But now I realize I was wrong, and I would like to go back to her. And are you sorry for what you've done? Yes, I am truly sorry. Now do you intend to love and respect her? Yes, I love her. I'm sure that I will be able to love her forever. But I hated him and I cursed him every day. And I know that I will never be able to trust him again. But you, woman, do you still love your husband? Yes, I still love him. I know that you will forgive him. I want so to forgive him. Marcellus, you have repented of what you have done and are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. And you too, woman, your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus. Now go in peace.
In these days we have become like lambs being led to the slaughter. I remember it like it was yesterday. You will be beaten, he said. They will persecute you. They will deliver you to synagogues and prisons. They will drag you before kings and governors because of my name. And whoever continues to bear witness to my name until the end will surely be saved. But if all this is true, then many of us will be martyred. Yes, we will. We have become food for the beasts, nailed to and burned on the cross. Those who persecute us know not what they are doing, but what they do becomes for us cause for glory. Peter, what will become of us? Beyond our deaths, held in the arms of the Father, we will wear for eternity the crown of martyrdom. But on the day of judgment, the skies will disappear in an enormous explosion and all the earth will be destroyed. And we will live for eternity in a new heaven and a new earth on which justice will rule. But the Praetorians are killing all leaders of the church one by one. Then they will surely turn to the elders, then the presbyters. Soon enough it will be our turn. Have faith in the church of Jesus. Brothers, it is founded on a rock because he lives in it. As for the elders, when it is time for us to die, others will take our place as elders and presbyters. It will be like this until the end of time. This is the will of the Father. I have prayed much for this to come about, and this is what I have established. Lucidus, Andrew, come here. Tatius, Publius, Mauritius, Justin. Brothers, in the name of Jesus, remember that Christ is the one and only priest, the Son of God who was crucified and resurrected. We are his ministers, not masters, but servants, servants of the will of God. He said to us, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Have faith in him. Tomorrow, I want to come with you. Of course, you will come with me. We will go far away. I must find some of our brothers who are lost. When will we return home, Peter? I do not know. Soon, I hope, as I do not have much time left. Before God, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years a day. My servants, Covadus, Simon and Peter. Where are you going? Master, I recognize you. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. When you were with me, I feel so happy. Tell me, why did you come here? Because the Good Shepherd never leaves his sheep in the hour of danger. I understand, Lord. I will return to my flock. This is your will for me, your servant. We were hoping that you would be able to escape to safety. When I was leaving Rome, he came towards me. He asked, Quo Vadis, where are you going? And I understood. I came immediately back to you. He who? Who was it that came towards you, Peter? Jesus, my Lord. When they took me, they wanted me to deny knowing him. But I will never deny again. It happened once, and I still suffer for it. That night in Jerusalem, in the courtyard of the high priest Caiaphas' house, a maid asked me if I knew him, and I said no. I do not know Jesus of Nazareth, I told her. Later I was asked again, do you know Jesus of Nazareth? And I denied it a second time, and then a third. I cried desperately for this betrayal, and he forgave me. I saw him with my own eyes, and I heard him speak with my own ears. I heard the voice of the Father taking pride in his most holy Son, I saw him heal the cripples, give sight to the blind, awake Lazarus from the sleep of death. One day he said to me, you are Kephas the rock, and on this rock I will build my church. The gates of the nether world will not prevail against it. He then said to me, that which you forgive will be forgiven. And now in this our last hour, as he instructed me, I say to you, brothers, in the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. With him we will conquer death. Have faith in him, and you will know salvation. Of our Lord, sixty-seven. I 
ask you to grant me a favor. Don't know if I can. I ask you to grant me the favor of being crucified upside down. I don't understand why. Is it within your power? Yes, it is. But why do you ask for this? I ask because I am not worthy of being crucified like my master. Our brother Simon, son of John, was called Peter because Jesus himself called him Sepha, the rock, saying, on this rock I will found my church, and he gave him the keys to the kingdom. He was the first apostle called by Jesus. He was a witness to the gospel of our Lord's death and of his resurrection. The Holy Spirit descended on him in Jerusalem on the day of the Pentecost. He was a shepherd of the followers of Christ. A multitude of men and women from Palestine to Rome were baptized by him in the name of Jesus. And here now, this Vatican Hill has been bathed by the blood of Peter. Here, he has borne the ultimate witness to Christ our Lord. And here we leave his earthly remains, which shall join those of all the other saints. Holy witnesses to Christ, all awaiting the glorious day of resurrection to come. But his soul has already gone to heaven, where Jesus the Savior has crowned his head with the radiant crown of the holy martyrs. <laughs>